Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Bevan. I'm here today with uh, Professor Selena Bartlett, who is, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Professor of uh, Neuroscience and Obesity at uh, the School of Clinical Sciences here at QUT, um, based here at the Translational Research Institute, um, and doing some really fascinating work on and research on neuroplasticity. That's right. Uh, so, Selena, what, what's the focus of your research? So, our main focus now compared to the past is helping people understand the brain can be changed at any time mm. with um, effort and focus. Mm. And we've been mapping all the neural circuitry inside the brain, like and how specifically things we eat like, and drink, like alcohol and sugar, actually change the brain mm. and make us want to eat more. Mm. And that's what, you know, some of the primary causes of addiction and obesity. So when you say changing the brain, is it actually like changing the... It's actually the, the changing, pathways it's changing the neurochemistry and the pathways oh, inside the brain. And our biggest breakthrough recently was like, I've been doing alcohol research for a long mm. time. We actually showed sugar changes the brain exactly the same way that alcohol and nicotine does. Wow. And wow. we've mapped all of the addiction pathways mm. inside the brain to show mm. that. Right. So, so is your research on that focusing on that mapping or on the interactions and the way people are all responding? All of it. We do all of it. We have animal research where we're focused on the mapping right yeah. down to the single protein, which is nicotinic receptors, mm -hmm. through to human research where we're developing mobile app and games to actually help people retrain mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. circuits that have been changed, wow. um, up to uh, public health talks and, and mm -hmm. general audience books that I've written to help people understand that they're in complete control of their mm. brain mm. if once they understand how it works. Yeah. In, and in understanding that and actually applying the outcomes of your research, so for me as an individual, what, what would I have to do? Like, would it, would, Is it about you know months and months of engagement and, and training or what's actually involved? Well, here? it's interesting because the first step is if I said to you, so what happens inside your brain when you're stressed out? What happens in my brain when I'm stressed out? What uh, parts of your brain are operating? What do you do? That's a really good question. Uh, I would have thought it was it was actually um, a response to um, logical thought. Even. <laughs> no, it's yeah. actually it, the way you react when you're overstressed is that you'll end up eating something. Oh, at the end of the day yes, because yes. and why is that because that circuit that's driving it is actually not logical thought it's actually millions of years old part of the brain oh. it's in the deepest part of the brain is that a comfort thing it's yeah it's because of uh fear and 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 stress activates the same part of the brain as fear does Right. And so the brain goes into fear mode and then right. it says oh I don't like this so I'm going to eat make you eat something to right. take away that feeling right and so the first thing I always say to people, if you don't know what's happening when your brain's stressed out, how are you meant to change anything? Mm. So when you talk about changing and, and, and training people to be able to do this, is this about um, just dealing with the way your brain's now being mapped or actually influencing how it could remap itself? Both of it. Yeah. How can you do anything if you don't understand how your brain works? Mm. No one's been shown that, so I spend a lot of effort now just helping people understand that they can understand it. It's not rocket science. And the second thing is we have to map it scientifically so we can show this in the back end too. And how, how, how can you do anything if you don't realise that sugar is addictive and sugar is embedded in all food now? And you, you made an interesting comment to me uh, as we're starting about um, trying to change the um, uh, the terminology of, from mental health into brain health. Yes. You really think it is as, as I suppose, as simple as that? Well, it's as not as simple as that, but yeah. it's a very important start. Yeah. Because as soon as we have mental health in the word, in the terminology, um, basically people think you're crazy, so no one talks about it. Mm. Whereas I see just the beauty of the power of the yeah. brain, because the brain is very, very powerful. It'll do whatever you want it to yeah. do. Yeah. So therefore, once we have people talking about it, like they talk about working out with their mm. physical trainers, yes. There's no one that has a brain trainer that I'm aware of. Oh, so and so people are operating with the most powerful force without yeah. controlling it. Yeah, controlling. And, and, and is, is the, you mentioned games. Yeah. So is part of that, that dynamic about using the games experience to actually achieve what you're talking about? Yes, yeah. so that's part of one tool. So I'm looking for tools 
that we can use to help people feel their brain for the first time and, and then get the hope and knowledge that they can actually change it and train it. Fascinating. Because you should be able to, you can train your brain like a, you train a muscle in your yeah. body. Yeah. Nothing more. We talk yeah. about a lot, but there's there's some physical neurochemical mm. aspects to mm. the brain mm. that are just that, that need to be trained. Right. And if they're not trained, then they go crazy and do all sorts of crazy mm. things. Mm. And we, we're we just having massive breakthroughs because we now have neuroscience, we have brain imaging, we have digital platforms all coming together with artificial intelligence mm. to actually disrupt mm. the treatment mm. of mental health problems. So, so the AI would be fascinating yeah. because we, would that be able to almost predict when certain things are going to happen yeah. to actually be a trigger? Exactly. Oh. And that's exactly what we're working on. So the idea is if we can develop a predictive algorithm using artificial intelligence of the big data that we're collecting in our clinical trials, for example, as a starting point, then if so if there's someone being able to warn you, hey, did you know that this sort of things happen throughout the day? You'd have to be careful about that tub of ice cream tonight. Mm. Uh, mm. That tub of ice cream is something that will take a year to work off your mm. body, right? Mm. Because of the way the body mm. processes certain mm. types mm. of food. So it's food's just one element mm. as a good example to demonstrate what I'm talking about. But it's, it's multiple other things too. Yeah. So currently we're in a situation where very few people have a fundamental, I call it fundamental understanding, mm -hmm. that they can do this. Yes, yes. So it's how far outsourced. away are, are these practical tools for well, the Well, they're right here, right now. They're everywhere. Right. It's just the knowledge is not. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I've been spending a lot of time writing books and giving talks yeah. to general audiences. And obviously we have our scientific lab here where we're doing all the research too. But it's just a, it's really is a revolutionary time in history mm -hmm. um, that we can take this to the public mm -hmm. because the way information is being disseminated now like it's never been before. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I just love it. I just mm -hmm. love what I do. I'd love it. It's changed my life, this mm -hmm. understanding. I, I was not thinking like this mm -hmm. very long ago. So neuroplasticity, is rel it's, it's been around for a long time, but it's now getting to a stage where people mm -hmm. can actually apply it to their daily life. Wow. Yeah. And also, there's just so many breakthroughs happening, like once upon a time we didn't think you could control your blood pressure, your heart rate and your skin temperature, but now there's some evidence emerging where we can actually control with thought our immune system. Wow. Mm. And it's the opposite of what I thought too. Yeah, and yeah. so basically the thing about being a scientist is mm. you know that you're wrong most yeah. of the time. Yes. And so you become more open-minded to mm. finding mm. what other people are learning. And, mm. and the, the thing that's really struck me after now 30 years doing what I do is that nearly any time I think I kind of know something, then bang, I discover I don't really know it at all. Because <laughs> I was developing yeah. medications yeah. for alcohol addiction for yeah. a really long time. Yeah. I really fundamentally believed if I understood how that circuit worked yeah. and I developed a drug against mm. it, I would solve, solve alcohol problems. addiction yeah. and then bang, wrong. <laughs> yes. like it's got a, it's got an element to play yeah. and I'm a pharmacist by yeah. training too, but it's got but there's just other tools coming yeah. as well and it's going to be I think everyone should be a neuroscientist. I think it's yeah. just going to change yeah. the world. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're it was, welcome. It was fascinating. Yeah, thank, thank you. you Thanks for interviewing me.